All right, this is Steven. And this is Chris. And we will be uh, talking about a Nasir versus the Foundry. Um, and this is like the new and improved Foundry from the, the last time. So there's like a bunch more cool assets. Oh, and I'm on the left red playmat. <laughs> and I am on the right uh, with the Reina Roja playmat. And I am uh, with the most um, intense concentration trying to get Nasir to work. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. He's not there again, yet. Uh, He's not there yet. I, for I forgot to trigger the, the oh. boundary ability. No. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget. Oh, daily business show. Yeah, I am testing out the like the most cheaty of cheat cards. It is so good. That card is so good. It would it's be so unfair. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It it would be totally busted if it cost any less than 2. Like that it that it costs 2 is yeah, still good. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous that it costs 4 to trash. Like, yeah. Oh. Do you think that uh, Fantasy Flight does that because they want certain cards to start being played? Like, they're just like, let's just make this hard to trash. Like, let's I make this thing like, stick around. I think part of it was like, let's make a card that is better than Jackson. Like, let's make a card that replaces Jackson in every deck. Yeah. Do you think this replaces Jackson in every deck? I'm of the opinion that it should and does. Yeah. But, uh, well... I think Daily Business Show is a lot more power, but it's also, you don't have the, like, the nice thing about Jackson is you have a little bit more versatility, like, you can draw when you want to, and you can also, like, throw cards away, like, hmm. so you can throw agendas and then, like, save yourself. So, would you say that this is the the fair version of Jackson, or do you think Jackson is the fair version of Daily Business Show? I think this is the fair version of Jackson. Like, Jackson is, like, a a panic button like yeah. you're like uh it, like it saves you from being agenda flooded whereas this like prevents you from being agenda flooded or at least helps mitigate like getting to a situation where you are agenda flooded which i think is better design that makes sense like, yeah yeah like i don't know in all honesty like i think jackson should just have the like trash ability and nothing else like I don't think he needs the draw two cards ability I think that would be a lot he would see play but he would see a lot less play yeah. if it just said like you know trash to like shove two cards into um, R&D so um, I've got a pretty good start here uh, R&D interface and a magnum opus that's uh, about as good as I can hope right now. Whoops, yeah. what am I doing here? HQ interface, do I want to do that? What am I thinking? I think I'm I... just kind of resin stuff left and right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I drew, that was my last click. I, I ran through Eli, double-clicked through it, and then drew. And I was thinking, oops, I had another click, I don't. So, yep. Ah, oh, man, daily business show, like, if you don't trash it, just gets out of hand. Because, it's like, if I need an agenda right now, I can get one. And if I don't want to see an agenda for like some time you can put it on the bottom it seems particularly good with the foundry because you can put ice you don't want uh but you have on the table at yeah. the bottom and then you can just go get it so it's like drawing two cards anyway kind of what what's also good with the foundry is it's really good defense against uh that new anarch card um showing off uh, which has not come out yet, but we're going to some, uh, pretend like it did. Yes, go ahead. Uh, it's the run event that lets you access cards from the bottom of R&D. Ah. So, like, daily business, so you're, like, putting agendas on the bottom. But with the Foundry, every time you res ice, you get to shuffle the deck. Ah, that's pretty good tech. Yeah. <sighs> Tricky. Yes. I yeah. think the Foundry is getting there. Like, it, it feels uh, right now that it's just on the cusp of being... Uh, competitive like i think it's semi-competitive now if you have a kind of I, I think this is the strongest foundry deck i've seen like this one and uh uh maybe the one you you brought the week after to yeah. local uh the are a local game store um just the ability to select whatever you want to do with daily business show find stuff with uh, executive boot camp like really taxing annoying ice it's super, super strong. It's annoying. And, and I mean, even if you 
pay two and then they end up trashing Daily Business Show, like I am completely okay with that. That's like a, a mini siphon. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, four credits is a lot for like runner econ. Yeah, it is. Like, you have now like lost your sure gamble. And it's like, well, I don't feel so bad losing it. Like, and it's not a like. It's a very powerful effect, but it's not needed. Like, if you have it on the board, it's kind of like a Sansan. Like, Sansan, mm-hmm. like, kind of enables you to just fast advance stuff out of hand. But, like, you still have, you know, biotic labor. Like, it's just, you know, it's nice to have it. Right, right. It's an, it's an engine and an enabler, would you call it? I mean, that's what Sansan is. It's just yeah, it's, wins you the game it, after a while if you don't trash it, right? It's, yeah, it's, it, I like enablers. Like, it's... Like, it doesn't automatically win you the game, but, like, if left unchecked, it just does really right. gross things. Right, right. How do you feel about playing horizontally with the Foundry? Um, I think it's pretty good. Like, I am completely uh, okay with doing that. Like, because you're not going to be that horizontal. Like, you might have three remotes, maybe, like I do right now. Maybe even four, but for the most part, yeah. Hmm. I got pretty lucky there. Yeah. Like, Snagging the two agendas did kind of hurt. So, um, was there a reason? I see. I wasn't sure if you could just put the pop-up window there just to just to say like you know, this is just a tax. I got nothing in hand. I've been putting us the stuff on the bottom of the deck with daily business show, and maybe I shouldn't go in there. Yeah, but, that's kind of like it's one of those bluffs of like, ah, you can go look in my hand. Yeah. Like it's. That's the Wayland yeah. player in you, I think. Yeah, that is definitely a, the Wayland thing. And now I ice it up. <laughs> <'Cause> I... <laughs> That's enough of that. Yep. So. Uh... But yeah, now I have two daily business shows, which met, lets me look at the top three cards and pick one. And like that's when it starts getting really out of hand. Ooh. That's uh, an Ichi 1.0. And I just face planted into that. The thing you can... The thing that's great about Naysir is you really don't care um, as long as you've got the right answers, right? So yeah. he's the kind of guy who has to have the right answers um, or needs to be able to find the right answers at, at any given moment. So uh, the, the trick with Naysir is to be aware of what you can run into and what you could lose the game to. So in this case, Itchy didn't really bother me. doesn't bother me. I put down a sharpshooter, just run right into it. I, will I just wanted another copy of Ichi. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Then it gets hard. That, that's that's also one of the problems with Naysir, right? Is that he uh, he tends to love first res and hate running through them the next couple times because it's just too taxing for him. And what's also great about the Foundry ability is like I had five cards in hand, so then you I res an ice, I find another piece of ice. Like it's kind of like a pseudo. HQ defense because I just get to bulk up my hand by another card. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, and I am daily business showing, and it is feels really good to have two out. <laughs> oh man, I uh, really can't leave that uh, alone. I got to go trash him. It's this is embarrassing. And I biotic out. Oh, gonna run it. You should run it. Uh, we know I that... think I do because I don't have that much ice out right now. Your luck with this is not good, but uh, I see some ice. Yeah, I think I grabbed one piece of ice. So uh, just for those of you who aren't aware of how the Foundry's ability works with biotic labor, or not biotic labor, I'm sorry, uh, accelerated beta test, yeah. yep. Uh, you The first ice you res each turn, meaning uh, your beta tested at res dice, can be searched for. And because the cards you're looking at uh, are actually on top of the deck, the yeah, ones, and not technically like in your hand or anything. They're not technically in your hand. They get shuffled back too. So you can uh, res one of the ice, shuffle the rest of them, uh, rest back in if you hit a couple of agendas. So it saves you the pain of uh, you know killing yourself inadvertently. Which the is one nice. thing to note though is, uh, say you hit two pieces of ice and one agenda, like you either get to install both pieces of ice or you install one and shuffle both back or the like second piece of ice and the agenda back in yeah like you can you can't install both pieces of ice and then trigger the ability on the second piece cuz it is 
the ability reads the first piece of ice, so the first install. Right, right. Yeah. Unfortunately, but, you know, that would just be too powerful. Yeah. If it said each time you res a piece of ice, how, how busted would that be? Oh, uh, it'd be pretty gross. All right. Oh, yeah. No. Oops. I think that was me misplaying there. Because <laughs> I resed one. I resed both, res and the... I still fetched. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, uh, man. That's... That is the problem with, like, learning new things. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. We all make mistakes. Um, yeah. So I've got Lady out. Uh, so I actually think breaker. what would be pretty good in this deck is, or I think a card that should actually see a bit more play is Snowball. Yeah, actually, Snowball is fantastic. It's uh, the only like problem, especially with... against this type of deck that runs a bunch of ice, like small ice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a bad idea. Like instead of Inti or something like that, because yeah. I've been playing one lady and one inti as a backup against uh, nbn uh near earth hub because you just need to get through uh the wraparounds and then you put atman at four or you grab a uh, lady and just crash through the elis uh that's not a bad idea and or you could like do some really weird things like playing with paintbrush and then snowball no or, oh. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, obviously you would have to build around a paintbrush deck, but, like, as your fractor, you play with yeah. Snowball, and then you can, like, Snowball into a server. It would be like, kind of cool. Because it might turn into, like, you, like, you're essentially turning one click into two credits. Yeah. By, like, it's janky. Don't it get me wrong. Janky, yeah. No, I, I like the idea of maybe using something like a Yogg plus uh, Dinosaurus, and then uh, t and then using Tinkering or um, Paintbrush to get through everything else. Yeah. Like, but that works really well in Kit, and I know Kit's used stuff like that for a long time. Uh, don't know how it would work in Nasir, though. I mean... Oh, Nasir now. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Man, you were oh, loaded, might. though. What the heck? How did you yeah. get so much money? Uh, peak efficiency, I... Oh. That card's I, uh, so good. <laughs> ancestral memories into <laughs> our archive memory. Oh, man. Every time. Every time, man. Archive memories into uh, peak efficiency. Yep. Um, I should also note the deck I'm playing is uh, uh, not my build. It's a sort of version of my build, but um, it's originally by um, Elad David Amir. I believe I gave his his name correctly, and uh, it's called Solidarity. So I'm playing Solidarity here, um, and I think I've, I just did a little bit of tweaking and added the HQ interface and a couple of other things uh, that uh, you know Nacer always struggles with HQ and um, just trying to smooth out the plays a little bit. But uh, just just for clarification, it plays two Magnum Opus. There's the other Magnum Opus and three personal or uh, three professional contacts um, and the goal of that is to give you eight potential first turn plays that's three workshops three professional contacts and two magnum opuses now it doesn't it's not a great idea to just slam magnum opus turn one but if you mulligan and you have no other choice you kind of have to um that's not awful it's not awful it's not the worst. No. The worst thing you can do is slam Magnum Opus and run into a Roto Turret, in which case you've lost your Magnum Opus, but they've lost and four credits. One and one credit. Yeah, and one credit, which is okay. It's not It's not awful. Um, it's not the worst thing that can happen to Nace here, so, and I've probably experienced all of those horrible things in my time playing him. So. Yeah, and I think I'm setting up the score for the uh, efficiency committee. Yeah, I yeah a double advanced card that kind of signals a three five or maybe a two four. Yeah, and I think this is probably because I know you don't play any three fives. I have some insider knowledge here, but all right, we're getting through bronze. How are we gonna get through bronze? We're not. Yeah, no dice. No dice. Yep. Yeah, and I think this is. 
Yeah, double advance and score it. And then install another one. That's what I would do. Uh, I would, because I don't have any money. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you install something. That's probably Daily Business Show. <laughs> yeah, I did trash one to install the agenda there. but. Oh, right, right, right. All right, I found my uh, I found my code gate breaker. It's still three to break a next bronze, which is that's true. Uh, which is just really gross. <laughs> it is, and actually, I like the way that you've spaced out the next bronzes because uh, Gordian Blade gets better if you've stacked all your code gates. I've done that before by accident. Oh, it feels awful. Oh, yeah, it's so like, bad. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You basically say this is this costs one, and this next one costs one. And you're like, okay, well, just walk through all my ice for basically nothing. Yeah, yeah. Just spread out your code gates, kids. That's a good idea. <laughs> like it's it's a lot easier in next, just because, or in the foundry, just because you can really control when you get your next silver or your next bronzes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I have an opinion on Astrolabe. And okay. Uh, I, I've I've been wanting to talk about it for a while, but I don't think it's very good. I so okay. Hear me out. I think it's an okay. I think it's okay. Uh, bye frost. Bye frost for double efficiency committee. No, what? This is not even fair. <laughs> All right. Sorry, this is where you're in, in real life. You are laughing maniacally, and in this commentary, you are laughing maniacally. So I mean, I, I could just hear it. Uh, Anyway, the the uh, most Nasir decks right now are kind of floating between these two cards, uh, Astrolabe and Toolbox, and uh, just because they're in faction uh, consoles, right? And they're the only in faction consoles really worth a damn. I mean, unless you want to play, I don't know, Monolith or something like that. Omni Drive. Um, <laughs> Omni Drive. Omni. No, no. I hate that card. I I I'm not a fan. Um, but it's not awful. It's just not very good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely not very good. Um, so I think that you can play toolbox effectively if you're playing a lot of stim hacks. And yeah. and I think because Nasir's magical number is nine, okay. And the reason I think it's nine is because you can get out at minute four with an SMC out, right? At, yeah. for, with nine credits. So he likes things that bring him right up to nine. Also, toolbox costs nine. So there's a nice synergy between that. Um, unfortunately, though, toolbox is really bad if you don't draw workshop. Meaning you just it just clutters up your hand. You're holding a nine cost thing. You don't really want to throw it away because maybe you won't get another one, right? And so you, yeah. it sits in your hand and it clutters it up. And then if you, maybe you draw your workshop in time because workshop is not a sure thing unfortunately, because we don't yeah. have a tutor for it. Uh, I'm not saying we need one, but it would be awesome. Uh, I mean, hostages. You can't hostage it. You can't? No, it's a location. I thought, oh, does hostage only get connections? Only gets connections, yep. Uh, yeah, right. I can get pro contacts, uh, Katie and other things, or Kati or other things, but I can't get, uh, yeah, no workshop, uh, unfortunately. Ooh. Yep. Anyway, um, I'm running a R and D. I'm going to see two cards, and I don't see anything. Um, but uh, why I like Astrolabe, and this is why I think that Akamatsu Memchip is probably the number three, maybe even the number two console. It's not even a console. It's uh, it's just hardware, but it does the same thing, and you don't have to worry about drawing an extra one. Okay. Uh, Peak efficiency for six. My God, <laughs> that card is really, really good. Who, who would have thought? Oh, and you do it again. Just archived the memories. Do it again. What? All right, all right. I'm okay with that. Sure, whatever. Have all the money. No problem. Um, and all of a sudden, it looks like you're on game point. The next thing uh, wins it. So, and I am yeah. behind. Yeah. Uh, I got all my breakers out. Now, what do I do, though? I mean, I just can't... I guess I don't have my code gate breaker. Or not my code gate, my sentry breaker. Well, you have a a sharpshooter, which is effectively a... Yeah, it'll get me into HQ once, which is good, yeah. yeah. 
Um, Two counters. Oh, oh man, so rough. <laughs> Second card, nothing, nothing. Poor lady. Lady is good. It's just you yeah. got that awkward phase right now where it's like one counter is not enough to get you in. Yeah. I think uh, we'll see more of it. I think, you know, good builds with uh, Test Run. Test Run makes Lady fantastic, especially in, like, Kate. Test could... Run, Scavenge. Test Run, Scavenge. I mean, being able to Test Run uh, uh, Lady out, then run something, like, right. maybe a couple times, and then it goes back to the top of your deck, then you just play it again. Ah, I just grab my uh, Reclamation Order for three Ancestral or Archive Memories. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, um, I, I did want to finish my thought on uh, Astrolabe. Like, Astrolabe doesn't always draw you a card. But the fact that it's it has an upside it and costs one. it costs one, yeah, is really strong. Uh, just think it, of it, it. It's just another mem chip. It's like, just another mem chip, yeah. Yeah, you can't count upside. on it. Yeah. Right. I guess it is, like, if you... For instance, if your deck just played three mem chips, like just slot in one astrolabe for one mem chip. Yeah, I'm like, that's fine. Yeah, it's great actually. It's like, uh, it's great when you draw it, and it's completely fine if you don't. And you never are worried that you're going to draw two of them and have to toss one. All of your yeah. cards are playable. Yeah, one and two. Ah, there's an efficiency committee. We're at six now. Yeah, go Naser. Um, you can do it. Yeah. Ah, man. I actually do want you to steal the extra efficiency committees just because they're really awkward to score. Not with another efficiency committee out. Well, I don't have. Uh, oh. Like, I don't think I had the uh, uh, shipment from Santan in hand, and that was the problem. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Like, so. Like, I was not confident I could keep you out. Man, all these things being installed. Scary. I do I like having, I, yeah. I, I do like having the early HQ interface though. That 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 has really kind of evened the the game a bit. Um, I, I I I mean the the problem with Acers, he needs to go outside uh, out of faction to find stuff that you know the basic kind of cards that help him not suck. Like <laughs> he needs <laughs> things like Imp and maybe even David and maybe things like I don't know Fairy. He would be maybe, a lot better or, if he had seventeen influence. Oh yeah, I, I think he'd uh, be closer to even with uh, a lot of the, the runners. You could fit in an HQ interface just kind of free, you know. But no, you yeah. can't right now. Uh, until they make until they make some way to bank money, he's going to be kind of second fiddle to everyone else, or third fiddle in some cases. Um, uh, yeah, that's sad. There's your two archive memories, <laughs> aka ancestral memories, aka whatever else you call them archive recall archive recall <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man ah, stupid magic cards i haven't played magic <laughs> in like 3 or 4 years and yet a tremendous amount of my brain space like i remember just like the ability the cost the colors yes. like the flavor text for a crap ton of magic cards and i don't play magic anymore it infiltrates your whole being doesn't it and, and I, it's just like, I know, like, I can't remember someone's name because I can remember that, like, some stupid card, like, Thrag Tusk is a 5-3 Trampler. It is like, damn uh, it. <laughs> like, I don't think it does Trample. Does it have Trample? No, I don't think it does, but it does gain you three life like when you... Five. Oh, five is it? Oh. Yeah. I just remember it being really broken and really unfair. <laughs> yeah, and when it leaves play, it puts a 3-3 three, three yeah. four into play or something like that. Yeah, that card. I hated that card so much. <laughs> yeah, I never really played much when that was in standard, but this is like, oh man. It's like I remember every like Mirrodin card. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like, like that set. Broodstar costs ten and it's two blue and eight. And it's just like, why do I remember that? <laughs> like <laughs> Oh uh, it's so annoying. <laughs> Alright. I have to say, uh, as far as rigs go, though, 
Uh, You're, you got a rig. I got a rig. I got quite the rig out, and I, I feel pretty pretty good about it. But uh, I also have a ton of ice. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight, yeah. nine, ten, eleven pieces of ice installed, and like the double daily business show, the daily double, the daily double. Nice. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Oh man, the card is so the good. Are back. <laughs> I, I should. So this is what I should have done, and I think this is the right play. I should have just. Taken four credits, run both of your business shows. I, yeah. I just had to. I have to. I got to keep you off of drawing cards. It's not really drawing cards, but seeing more than one card a turn, you know? Or just, yeah, seeing an agenda. Because I'm at that point where it's like, I just need an agenda. Right. Yeah, this is. Yeah. This is like the toughest spot for Nasir. Like, Nasir gets to game point, but he can never really seal the deal. <laughs> yeah, he has some trouble with it. And uh, you can't play things like Notoriety just simply because he's he can't run more than once a turn, usually. Sometimes he can, sometimes he can, but it's not common. Oh man, that is that spells doom for me. Like, and what sucks about Nasir is like, say you run R and D, like because like there's an unres piece of ice, like you're just not gonna get in now. All right, here it goes. Yeah. Six extra clicks. Biotic, that's seven extra clicks. Install, archive memories. It's uh, install shipments. Install shipment, archive memories, shipments, use shipments, win. Yeah, I could have just, in you, like... You didn't use, I, need to use all of that, but yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was flashy. <laughs> I just wanted to have nine clicks as the corp. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I really like this Foundry deck, and I like the idea of exploiting uh, efficiency committee because I would say the that card. Actually got, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, the deck got a lot better when I took out the uh, Adonis campaigns and put in the uh, uh, a boot camp, executive boot camp. Yeah. Because then you're resing ice on your turn and their turn. I don't think or, we saw it this game, but yeah. I mean, we didn't. But uh, it still has some huge upside for the Foundry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching part four of our Nacer and Focus series, and uh, we hope to bring you a little bit more of Nacer in the future. Uh, let us know how we did, and uh, yep, uh, keep on running, everybody. All right, take it easy.